tools of the trade. So in this uh, lecture, we're going to talk about the different tools that we use as a hardware technician. So the first thing we're going to look at is a basic toolkit for assembly of computers. Uh, we have lots of different tools that we use, and you can buy little kits that are for a computer technician. They'll contain things like a screwdriver with removable, tick, tip, yeah, removable tips. Uh, they might even have hex driver tips, as you can see there in number two. Uh, screwdriver or Torx tips that you can see in number three. Torx are the ones that look like little star bits. Okay, they're very common in computers. Um, number four is a chip puller. It's kind of like tweezers, but they are um, rubber uh, coated so that you don't have ESD issues. Um, number five, you have jeweler's screwdriver set. Uh, we use those in our lab here, right? The small screwdriver sets. Uh, number six is just a regular flat blade screwdriver. Number seven, a Phillips head screwdriver. Same with number eight. Uh, number nine is pliers. Sometimes you get a stripped hex bolt and you'll need to use a pliers to get it off. Um, needle nose pliers, they give you that, that needle nose tip to grab things a little bit easier. Um, we also can have things like Torx drivers and hex drivers. Uh, again, if you have that kit from number one uh, with the different tips, you wouldn't need those particular drivers. And then the last one is this step number 13. Uh, is called a uh, three claw part retrieval tool. And basically on the end, it has a thumb presser, kind of like a needle syringe. And when you push that, the front of it comes out with three little claws, and you can grab bolts that you dropped onto the motherboard very easily because you can't necessarily get your hand in there. So it's kind of just like an extender arm for you. Again, we talked earlier about ESD straps. They're very important, very inexpensive device that will really help save you a lot of time and a lot of energy and damage to your machines. Um, ESD wrist straps, you basically put one arm on you, one end on a bare metal of a case, as we're shown in this picture. It's used for you to ground yourself before working on sensitive components, such as expansion cards, memory, processors, and other computer components. The next one we have is a power supply tester. Uh, this is one example of one. We played with one in our labs as well, uh, and we use this to test our computer's power supply. We hook it up, and it will give us red lights or green lights based on the fact if we have good power or bad power. And again, we're always looking for 3.3, 5, and 12 volts for our power supplies. That's the DC voltage that we get from our power supply. And it takes in either 120 or 230 volts AC, converting it into DC for us to use. A multimeter, we use this in our labs as well, right? We can actually use this to test the electrical socket as shown here. We can also use it to test things like the power supply. We use it with copper cabling to verify continuity, making sure the cable isn't broken using the ohm setting. Resistance, which again is the ohm setting. Amperage or voltage, in this case we're checking voltage here, make sure the wall outlet is 119 volts or somewhere around 120. It can be used also to verify if a cable is broken uh, by checking the ohm resistance across the cable. We did that before, remember, with our power cords. We checked if we had zero going across it, zero ohms, and then it was a good cable. If we had infinite or a large number of ohms, it was a bad cable. Uh, this can be used also to test the power, support, uh, power source, such as the wall outlet. For US, we're looking for 115 to 125. For Europe, we're looking for 230 to 240, both in the volts AC. A printer maintenance kit. So when we talked about printers, we talked about the fact that there's a lot of replaceable parts that we can use. And if you have a laser printer, these are very expensive. And so what you'll do is you'll get a printer service kit, such as this one from HP, that comes with a fusing roll, a transfer roller, separation pads and pickup rollers, because those are parts that wear down over time, uh, as well as a separation feed and pickup roller or a cleaning brush. And you can then replace each of these little components uh, in the printer, saving you a lot of money, where this kit might cost you $100 um, and the printer might cost you $2,000, right? So it's easier and cheaper to replace the parts on it than to just throw away the whole printer. And it's called a printer maintenance kit. It is spe uh, specific to the model of printer you're getting. Okay? So if you have an HP 4250, it might look like this. If you have an HP 5100, it looks different. Cable tester. So when we deal with Ethernet cables, network cables, we can verify the continuity of each wire inside the cable, because remember we have those eight wires in there making the four pairs, uh, that there's no breaks. What we do is we plug it into both ends, hit the tester, and it will actually go, as you can see here, and the lights will match up as it goes through for a straight through cable, making sure pin one is going to pin one. Pin 2 is going to pin 2 all the way down through pin 8. Okay, This verifies the pinout for your connectors. If you have a crossover cable, you'll have pins that are actually switched uh, meeting that crossover needs. Um, but again, your testers are designed to test for that as well. A loopback plug. 
Uh, what a loopback plug does is it actually takes the transmit and receive pins or fibers, this one happens to be a fiber one, um, and it loops it back to the other interface. So in this case, all that's happening is the transmit fiber is turning around and going straight back out to the receive fiber. I could put that into my fiber network card on my computer and use diagnostic software to make sure that the card is properly sending and receiving fiber signals. Okay? They make these for fiber, they make these for category 5 if you're using network cables. They make them for parallel and serial for printer and uh, com communications network port connections as well. So they do make a lot of these, it just depends on which one you need. This one is an example of a fiber, uh, fiber loopback plug. The next one we're going to talk about is a punch down tool. And what a punch down tool is used for is to terminate wires on a punch down block without stripping off the insulation. Uh, we use this with either 66 or 110 blocks, which is where all of these network jacks in the building, they go back to a patch panel, and the back of it is what's actually a punch down block, which looks like you can see this white uh, bar on the right side. That's what a punch down block looks like. We'll use this tool to actually punch this uh, jack onto it, um, and that way we can use it for the patch panel. I'll show you guys a video later of how that actually works. Um, it'll make a little bit more sense. Toner probe. A toner probe allows you to place a tone generator at one end of a connection and use the probe at the other end of the connection. And what it'll do is it'll actually detect where the cabling is going. So where this is helpful is if you enter a building that some other network technician has wired and they didn't do a good job labeling it. So for instance, I see there's a network jack in the back wall there where the printer is. And if I want to find out where that network jack goes, I can plug my tone generator, which in that case is the top device here, into that network jack. I then use the probe, and as I follow the wall, it will make, it's kind of like a hot cold game if you're a little kid, and it'll go beep, 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 when you're really close to the wire, and it'll further beeps or quieter beeps when you're away from the wire. So I can trace it through the wall and ceiling and figure out, does it go south down the building or north down the building, and start walking around until I find it. Um, I'll bring one in tomorrow and we can play with it during our lab time. Okay, so you guys can see what, see what I'm talking about with it. Um, it's also referred to as a fox and hound because the fox makes the noise and the hound chases the fox. So the tone generator is the fox and the probe is the hound. This is the probe. You can see the one on the bottom here with the speaker. You put that tip up against the cable and it will make noise if you're on the right cable. Like I said, I'll bring one in tomorrow. You guys will play with it. You'll see what I'm talking about. It's, it's a very good tool, very easy to use. The next one we have is a wire stripper. If you have to create a network cable uh, or strip wire off, a, uh, strip insulation from a cable, this is the tool to use. Okay, it's often used in networks to strip the insulation from the outside of the Ethernet cable so that we can create our own cables of various lengths. Okay, we use this to strip the wire, then we use a crimper to put the cap on the wire. Which brings us to the crimper. Uh, the crimper attaches the plastic connector to the end of the wire. This can be something like an RJ45 or RJ11 for network or phone jacks or it can be something like an F-type connector used for coax cable. This particular crimper has both. It has an RJ11, the smaller version, towards the top of the handle, and the RJ45 towards the tip of the connector. Okay? It allows us to make our own cables of different lengths. Once we create our cable, we should then use our network tester that we talked about earlier to verify we made the cable properly. So, uh, sample question. Toolkits generally have blank for the removal and replacement of jumpers. So jumpers are those little plastic blocks, right? How do we get those off of a drive if we don't have good fingernails? Uh, can we use a hex driver, an eyebrow tweezer, a Torx driver, or a three-part claw retrieval tool? In this case, we would use a tweezer because the tweezer will give you two things that will grab onto it and pull it off nice and easily. That's the kind of questions you're going to get is basically what tool will you use for what purpose?